Good evening, everybody. This is George Fraser and my partner, Veronica Conway, on our Power Networking pre-conference series. Um, We are blessed tonight to have um, one of the shining stars of America, certainly one of the shining stars of our community, Miss Lisa Nichols, who will bless us with her appearance at the Power Networking Conference on Thursday. And we're really excited about that. And this is just sort of a, a, little, a, a little sampling of what you can expect at this incredible conference, our 11th year, June the 28th through the 30th in Dallas, Texas, our first time in Dallas, Texas, our first time actually um, west of the Mississippi. So we're really excited. Uh, we're making a new move and putting a new coat of paint on the Power Networking Conference and bringing you some of the best and brightest talent from around the country. And speaking of talent, my uh, co-host of this series over the last actually couple of years is, of course, Veronica Conway. And Veronica is often dubbed uh, the secret weapon by her clients, and she's an award-winning entrepreneur and master of transformative, transformative technologies. Uh, Veronica works with business owners, executives, and world leaders and other peak performers that, that want to transform mental internal barriers that prevent them from realizing their greatest financial and personal potential. And Veronica's had single breakthrough sessions with clients that have created multiple seven-figure outcomes, most recently a $93 million contract. Uh, she has coached everyone from truck drivers to CEOs and athletes and artists and celebrities and with more than 4,000 hours of personal business and financial coaching experience. Veronica specializes in advanced and proven technologies that give you accelerated performance and an unprecedented competitive advantage. Veronica has been my personal coach for several years. So again, Veronica, welcome to the call and thank you for accepting this duty and responsibility. This probably is the 24th or 25th time that you've done it. So God bless you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, this is one of my, I, I love Lisa Nichols and I'm honored to be here and, um, and I'm happy to be of service uh, to our community in this way. So thank you. Well, thank you, Veronica. Um, now uh, we, we save the, the best for last and, and that is our honored guest for tonight. She has been on these calls with us, I think once or twice before over the last couple of years. She is a rock. Uh, She is a servant leader. Uh, Lisa Nichols is an internationally known life coach and teacher, a motivational speaker, best-selling author, an expert on teen esteem and personal empowerment, who has personally impacted the lives of more than one million teenagers. And Lisa wants you to know and to remember that motivating the teen spirit is which is her organization, is designed for leadership teens, high-performing teens, and teens from great homes as well as all others. And as as Lisa would say, all teenagers deserve to have the right to learn um, what their own emotional prosperity looks like. I have been knowing Lisa for almost 20 years, and I am always flawed when I watch her perform and serve our community with a heartwarming, heart-wrenching, truth-to-power um, presentations that really turn our lives around and make us think about our lives. She is, she is exceptional on the stage. She is an exceptional human being and exceptional in, 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 in transformative technologies as well. So, Lisa, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your, I know, extraordinarily busy life and, and to, to share some time with us tonight. We have packed phone lines tonight. Uh, we did a, a fairly decent promotional job in getting the word out, and uh, the, it sort of went viral on us, and uh, we probably have more people than we have lines tonight. But uh, this is a true testament to who you are and what you have to offer our people and our community. So welcome to our Power Networking pre-conference uh, series, Lisa. Thank you so much. 
Oh, thank you so much for having me. You know, George, where you are is where I want to be, and Veronica, uh, I have personally seen you at work, girl, so I could say uh, you are, in <laughs> fact, the bomb, the bomb com. So mm-hmm. everything George says about you is true, and then some. And, George, you know you're one of my most favorite people on the planet. Uh, though my schedule is packed and tight, there is no other place I'd rather be right now than right here spending time with my sister friends and my brother friends who are connected with the Power Networking Conference, and hopefully I will see them there. So I'm excited to spend time with you you both this evening and everyone in our community. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, your story is fascinating and um, heart-wrenching and actually inspiring, and especially the way you 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 articulate it the way you tell it the way you sing it you're almost like um uh, a great songstress on the stage when you when you when when you when, when you're in your zone and you are are talking about the things that enabled you to move from your limiting beliefs as you like to put it to beliefs that have not only inspired millions, but have taken you to the top of your game in really a, a relatively short period of time. How do you, how did you, um, and how can others uh, overcome their limiting beliefs? Sure. Thank you for asking that. You know, George, I began to study. I began to study limiting beliefs um, years ago because I looked at what's the difference between you know, this young woman and this young woman when it seems as if their life has been pretty much the same, but one excels and the other stays stuck inside this glass ceiling that they really created for themselves. But what I realize is it's the belief system that many of us are trying to change our financial place or we're trying to change our physical place, but we haven't moved to a a new mental zip code. And when I begin to learn that, you know, just as an African-American woman, I was taught to lean on my faith and my spirituality, and I got that. I got the faith. I mean, I can hold the faith of a mustard seed, a lemon seed, a a watermelon seed. I got that. But then the belief system in myself, I realized that was the wavering factor. And so when I began to understand that wherever your mental zip code is, that's where your life is going to be. Whatever you believe yourself to be, whatever you believe is the best you can do, that's the best you can do. And so I became fixated probably 20 years ago on how do I enhance my mind? How do I, how do I believe something new and something different? What I really began to understand is that we come here with a blueprint, a blueprint handed down from our beautiful ancestors, our mothers, our fathers, our great 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 grandparents, and that blueprint is necessary. But there there becomes a point in time when we have to add a new set of thinking to it, or else we will we'll have a limited way of living. And so I began to look at what's my blueprint. My blueprint was money is hard to make. My blueprint is there'll never be enough. My blueprint was money don't grow on trees. You don't have, we don't have extra. My blueprint was we can't afford that. That was my blueprint. So Mm -hmm. I became, I became committed, George, to see, can I learn a new belief system? So when my son, Jelani, who's 17 now, when he turned eight, I stopped saying we can't afford it. And I start saying, that's not a financial priority in our house. Just the mm-hmm. shift of that mm-hmm. from no longer mm-hmm. saying we can't afford it, so that's not a financial priority. So I began to look at everything in my life that way. Right. And so it, it, really, if you look at each individual on this call, we have the tools we need. We really, the scary news is that we have everything we need to, to get to where we say we want to get to. The, mm-hmm. the great news is we have everything we need to get to where we want to, but the, 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 the alarming news as well as if we're not getting there, is it possibly our belief system? Mm. Yeah, it and is. That's hard. It yeah, is. that's hard because you can't touch it. You can't touch your belief system. I have students come from all over the world so that we can really work on their belief system. And this is a, not just around finances and money. This is around relationships. It's around spirit. It's around any area of your life. What do you What do you believe to be true? Because that's going to be true for you. 
Right. So we're programmed, right. really. I mean, it's not in our DNA. Obviously, we're not born with a specific belief system. That this belief system is programmed into us by our surroundings, by the uh, talk and the conversation around us, the, as I like to say, the kitchen table conversation, what we're told we can or cannot be, what we can or cannot have. So, so it's, it's, we really uh, we learn it, right? Yeah, there's four, there's four, there's four um, blueprints. There's your cultural blueprint. Because of the color of your skin and your culture, you have a belief system. Because of your, your, your gender, female or male, you have a blueprint. Because mm-hmm. of your geographical origin, wherever you grew up comes with a blueprint. And lastly, because of your religion, you have a blueprint. Now, in all of these blueprints you need, they help set the boundaries. They're like the bumper rail that's bowling alley. They help you keep going straight down the aisle called your life. But at some point, you'll find yourself feeling like, Godzilla in an apartment building. You've outgrown your belief systems. They don't work for you anymore. And as a matter of fact, if you if you hold on to those same belief systems, you actually have to shrink yourself. You actually have to stop growing. But most people are so uncomfortable in the unknown. Like if I let go of these, what do I grab a hold of? Who does mm-hmm. that make me? I tell people most people are more satisfied with the familiar discomfort than they are with an unfamiliar possibility. If you guys are listening, you might want to write that down. They're more satisfied with a a familiar discomfort than they are with an unfamiliar possibility. Key word there is familiar and unfamiliar. And so when you burst out of that blueprint, George, you've done it. Veronica, you've done it. I've done it. When you burst out of that blueprint, you're saying, wait a minute, I'm, I'm available in this moment to redefine my future. Now, that, that's a blank sheet of paper now. That There's nothing on it. So that's exciting, and it can be scary. And that's it's why ter- community it's, yeah, like, it's yeah, that's why the community It can be terrifying. Why, it can be terrifying because it, again, is the unknown. But that's where you start creating. Most people won't write their autobiography because all the pages are already pre-written. They're just cutting and pasting Chapter 4 into Chapter 24. See, when you are willing to turn the page and have a blank page, and write something totally new, that's when you're playing out there on the skinny branch, George. You're not on the fat branch where it's mm-hmm. safe. You're out on the skinny branch. And do you know we want to be on the skinny branch, but we sit back on the fat branch kind of going, well, what if I fall? Well, what if the wind blows me away? Well, what if? And do you you know, and I know, Veronica knows, and most everyone listening to this call knows, that the skinny branch, out on the skinny branch is where you're going to find the most bliss, the most joy, the most opportunity, but you got to be willing to take that risk. And don't you don't you find Lisa? Because I, I do some I do believe stuff in my work too. It's like don't you find that when people are kind of up leveling to the next level, so that that sense of possibility, that when they when they inhabit that identity, when they inhabit that new space, maybe you found this in your own life and your own experience. When they inhabit that new space, there's a bunch of fear, terror, going out further on the limb right, on the branch that happens at every level of up-leveling your life, Listen, right? Like it, it, yeah. there, there is very little safety in explosive growth. There is very little yeah. safety. You know, your seatbelt normally can't even hold you in when you're transforming your life because you don't even know how to, you don't even know exactly how to map it out. You can create the best plan possible, and then that's where your faith lens, lends in. I was born in South Central Los Angeles between the Holland Crip 30s and the Roland 60s. Anyone who's heard me speak has heard me tell the story. It's mine. And I was, I was academically challenged all through school. That was my story. That was my experience. And I, I either get to hold on to that and stand in it as a reason to be mediocre, or I get to stand on it as my platform, which makes this, this phase, this chapter of my life so delicious to tell is that I'm the same girl who got a fail in English the very last time I took English, but I'm also the same woman who has six bestsellers. Now, I chose to stand on it. Now, I can't tell you how many times I was walking forward with knees knocking and teeth chattering. Somehow people tend to believe that if I'm afraid, I should stop moving. See, determination, Veronica, is being afraid and still moving forward. You, it's okay mm-hmm. to be nervous. It's okay to be scared. To be scared does not mean you're without faith. To be scared means that you're stepping into the unknown. But to be determined is to be committed to walk through the fear. It's okay to feel the fear. It's not okay to be paralyzed in the fear. And so the difference between you and I and anyone else who's achieved anything in the world and those who have not 
is that when we approach fear, we looked it in the face, and if you did it like I did, you said, oh, I'm scared as all get out, and then kept going. And, mm. and most people want, most people don't want to feel that level of discomfort. But I'm going to tell you what my grandmother said. My grandmother said, your conviction is not going to always be convenient. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's being willing to feel the discomfort of growth, being willing to feel the, the cost of sacrifice, being willing to to lay down an old behavior. See, in order for someone's listening to my voice tonight, in order for you to move to the next level of your, of your life, you have to lay down that, that habit of blame. You have to lay down that habit of procrastination. You have to lay down that habit of being a victim. You have to lay down that habit of being a martyr and serving everyone else to your own detriment. Your, your future cannot handle that behavior, and it will not be created. And so you have to at some point, Kim sings this song. Kim has on his CD, Chemistry. I love it. There's this one verse that says, um, the man I used to be, the man I used to be had to leave. Something like this, the man I used to have to leave so the man that I am could be born. I mean, it's a fabulous line mm. that says, in order for my future to have life, I had to be willing to allow a part of me that couldn't fit in my future. Imagine a doorway, George, and you're walking through this doorway. On the other side of this doorway is that this, this breathtaking future. But attached to your back is this big block, 12 by 12 block of procrastination and scarcity, lack, blame, shame, guilt. And every time you got to the doorway, you couldn't get through because you had all these toxic things, limiting beliefs strapped to your back. Every single one of us are like that. And we have the choice and the option to literally stop at the doorway, turn around, unstrap the old behaviors and the old mindset that we used to use, that we needed at one time, that no longer serve us and leave them at the doorway, look at them, and bless them and say, I love you, I needed you. At some point in my life, you protected me, but you cannot fit in my breathtaking future. <laughs> and, to be, and to be bold enough, can you, can you visualize that, Veronica? You can visualize yes, that, right? Yes, right yes. At the door. And I love, this, I love to speak in pictures so people can see. Imagine every single person that can hear my voice, if you got five things strapped to your back that cannot fit through the doorway to your breathtaking future, are you willing to stand at the doorway and look through the window at people like Veronica, George, myself, and other amazing people that you may choose to honor, or are you willing to stop, turn around, and take the straps off and say, I needed you at one time, but I've outgrown you, and you won't fit in my future. I have to leave you here. Are Mm. you willing to do that? That's the question. Right. Sorry, y'all. Right, I got right. it. I got no, it. No, so so, so how so how did how did you apply this to money? Like you, like you you've built a multi million dollar business as a single mom, but how did you how did you apply this idea mm-hmm. to money? I mean, these are tough economic mm-hmm. times. You've managed to mm-hmm. do it anyway. What was the biggest financial lesson in all of this for you? Well, I, I had many, and, and I have to I have to make sure I give I give reference to you know I I'm grateful that I run a multi million dollar company. But I want everyone listening to understand the distance between who I was and who I am. And I embrace every part of my journey. I'm not embarrassed about any part of my journey. But when my son, who's graduating this year from high school, when he was born, I was on government assistance in order to have him. I remember walking into the county building on Century Boulevard in Los Angeles, sobbing in tears, realizing that I did not have a way to have my baby unless I got on the county full of pride and full of anger and full of embarrassment. I, I, I will never forget standing in front of the woman at the window, and I said, ma'am, I know you might hear this a lot, but I promise you, if you help me get through this phase, I will never be back here again. And I remember her looking at me with this kind of flippant look like, whatever, lady, and I'm sobbing. And then something shifted in her as she really felt my conviction. And at the end, she says, listen, I'm going to put you to the front of the line because you don't seem like you belong. You, you should be sitting in here for six hours, lady. And by the way, I believe you, Miss Nichols. I believe you will not be back here again. And I remember eight months later after I had my baby, I went into the, the county building, got on the county a month before I had my baby when I realized there was no other way to do it. And eight months later, um, I'm sitting on the couch, and my son, Jelani, needed another pamper. I went into the cabinet to get Jelani another pamper, and I didn't have another pamper. And I remember going to the ATM, packed him up, went to the ATM to get $20 out. And I I didn't have enough money to get $20 out. 
I didn't have enough money to get twenty dollars out. So I went home and I wrapped Jelani in a towel. And for the next two days, I ra- I just I, the best thing I could do was put my hand on top of his towel. So the moment he got wet, I can change the towel. That was the best way. Veronica, I remember in that moment, I got bankrupt with being broke. See, bankruptcy mm. means bankruptcy means there's no more. It's done. Start over. That's what bankruptcy means. And most people just equate bankruptcy to financial. But see, you can become emotionally bankrupt mm-hmm. as well. You can, you can become mm-hmm. spiritually bankrupt as well. In that moment, I was emotionally bankrupt with every excuse I could ever have for not having resources for my child and myself. At that moment, I, I hit my ground. You know, the, the great thing about this climate is that so many people listening to this call, so many people going to Fraser Net, we you're going to hit your ground. And when you hit your ground, there's nowhere to go but up. I hit my ground that day. I hit the ground when I had to wrap my son in the towel. And I looked at my son Jelani laying on his back. I said, don't you worry, baby. We will never be this broke again. And something happens, Veronica, when you move from negotiable to non-negotiable. When you move from optional yeah. to non-negotiable. See, Many people, many of you listening to my voice, you really, really want that success, but it hasn't become non-negotiable yet because you're still determining will it cost you too much? Will it cost you too much time? Will it cost you too much money? See, the investment in yourself, you're still counting the dollars and cents that it's going to cost you, measuring if that's too much. See, the difference between that type of person and me, Veronica, was that nothing was too much for me. I was willing to become radical. I was willing to be, to be considered crazy for my success. I was willing to be ostracized. I was willing to go where people who didn't look like me were. I was willing to do what I had never done, say what I would never said, to become who I had never been. So I went around people who were used to money. I went around people who had made a lot of money. I went around people who weren't afraid of money. I went around people who, who had knowledge about how to make money. And I became their student. And when I come and I teach, I teach the lessons that they taught me because they didn't have that limiting belief when I met them. I had the limiting belief. Now, I may have been able to teach them about spiritual growth, but they can teach me about about revenue shares and about investments and about things like that. And so I was willing to invest in myself. Listen, I went to the same training. It cost me about $1,500 to $3,000 each training, including the hotel, including the food, including the travel. It cost me fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars every time I went to this training. I went to this training forty two times in a row, Veronica. Forty two times. Mm. I didn't miss I didn't miss a one. Now at the time mm-hmm. Jelani, Jelani was four, five, six, and seven. And people would say I worked for LA Unified School District at the time. And people would say, How can you afford to go? I said, I can't afford not to go. My future is dependent on it. And there is where I learned how to build a multi-million dollar business. And now I run a multi-million dollar business because I was bankrupt. So someone listening to our voice tonight, and and whoever you are, just in your own way, let us know. I love feedback. If you're bankrupt, like this old story doesn't fit me anymore. I'm like Godzilla in an apartment building. i got to break out. Now, there's no magic potion lotion. There's no sprinkle fairy dust. There ain't no magic wand. You can't right. drink no juju juice. You can't drink no juju juice. You can't even stand next to me, rub up next to me. You can't Facebook me. You can't. None of that's gonna work. You gotta pull your sleeves up, turn your elbows up, put your chin down, get some skin knees, some skin chin, and be willing to pay that price. You gotta do that. And if you are, if you're willing to become non-negotiable, then I promise you, Fraser Net and every other community that you'll find there. We have the system. Right. 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 Lisa, you're very candid uh, in your programs. It's amazing how candid you are and, you know, what don't you share about your life? I mean, I don't, I don't really know, but uh, (laughs) what is your biggest, what is your biggest fear right now? You, you've just, um, you're getting ready to start a a, a public uh, offering and, and uh, I mean, these you're just really, really stepping out there, not only in, uh, on faith, but you, you've used because you've got the talent to back it up. But um, because you're so candid, I mean, what, what what is your greatest fear at this moment in time? Um, 
I, I am very transparent. Um, and let me let me first just tell you why. I'm transparent because I, I feel like it's not in my perfection that I'm I'm qualified for this job. It's in my imperfection that I'm qualified for this job. And so there's no, I have nothing to hide and nothing to protect. While I enjoy my privacy, believe it or not, I have a very private life. I choose to um, make my life available to to diminish the mysticism to success. Mm-hmm. Because there's this belief system that there's perfection in success. Mm-hmm. But the more you understand the imperfection is in the success, the more you give yourself permission to have a bit of it. And so mm-hmm. if you ask me what am I most fearful of, I just got to tell you first, as a mother, my son is graduating high school, and, <laughs> and I'm sending him on a three-country culinary internship tour before he starts mm. his culinary mm. um, uh, education at Lake Cordon Bleu. So he's going away to New Orleans, and then he's going to the British Virgin Islands, and then he's going to Italy to uh, to, to um, intern. So as wow. a mom, as a mom, it's, yeah. oh, my God, I've done all yeah. I could do, and now I just have to say yeah. that, um, that, that some of those seeds that were planted sprout some good yes. judgment. You know, so that's my first fear. I'm gonna be quite honest with you. Um, I'm saying goodbye to one phase of my life as a mother, and um, hello to another phase. And I, the other, I sent. I, I'm, before you go on, I, I sent my daughter off to Wellesley uh, last oh. year, and and it's like uh, when they're gonna. We've been parenting all that time, right? And they're about to go off. It's like, did I get it all in? Wait, is there oh. is there are there ten more things that I can parent around right. that I can cram in at the last minute? Right. Like, right? Like you, because oh, yeah. you're releasing them into the universe, right? right? And you right, are right. you're you're prayerful that they can go right. and that they have everything that they need. So I, I get that. Right. I, I get that. And you know, the the reality is, how do you how do you build a business and be a parent? I mean, I get that question so much. How do you build a business and be a parent? And, you know, and know you did it all right. You know, and I have some techniques that I've been very consistent using that's helped me to establish a very close relationship with my son. At the end of the day, he's on his way out the door. I think the other thing that um, – there's two other things. If I'm being totally transparent, the easy thing to tell you is, yes, my company is going public. I'm very, very excited. Um, we, uh, we're just finishing our, our, our pre-IPO we thought we would. Our goal was to raise 150,000. We raised over 725,000 pre-IPO wow. dollars, and I've never run a publicly held company before. And many of my friends, mm-hmm. George, George, you as well, have advised right. me and given given me great insight. And and I I have to um, I stand that that all, I can stand on the shoulders of everyone who's done it right and everyone who's done it wrong, and I get to learn from them. And the rest I'll have to learn on my own. And so. That that makes my knees knock and my teeth chatter. And then the last area, which is the area, George, that I'm not so uh, super excited to share, but I, my commitment is to be forthright and transparent, is that I've started uh, in the world of dating. Really? Veronica, say it again. Veronica, say it again. Veronica, Veronica, <laughs> Veronica, you see how I say that? I, I've started in the world of dating. Um, and so, so you, you know, I, I'm at this place where I, I've raised a beautiful son and I've built a great company. And I look up and say, oh, oh wait a minute, you know, I'm woman and I, I want companionship. So, and and to be quite honest with you, uh, building a business is far less risky <laughs> than a relationship, and uh, and being present and available to that. So, those are the three things that um, don't necessarily bring me fear, but that I, I pray more over than anything else. <laughs> Wow. Uh, in your, in your, uh, Lisa, in your series, um, uh, Wisdom and Wealth, you, you teach people that um, building wealth is a sort of a lifelong process. And, you know, what is the best practice that you put into place for creating wealth? What's the best practice you can suggest to our listening audience tonight for, for creating wealth? I'm constantly investing your education that to recognize that you are playing the best game that you know how right now. Mm-hmm. You're, not, you're not saving your best game for later. You're playing your best game now. And that you have taken yourself as far as you can take yourself. I, I tell people every day I get up and eat my slice of humble pie and drink my low-fat milk and make sure I have a coach. 
Uh, so when when I hired a coach 10 years ago, uh, my business grew the first year over 258%. Five mm-hmm. years after five years after coaching me, she tried to fire me. She didn't really fire me. She wanted to release me because she said I had learned everything. I had a conniption fit. I said, you cannot let me go. So I hired her on projects for the next five years. Two mm-hmm. years ago, two years ago, I hired her as my president of my company and gave her stock in my company so she wouldn't go anywhere. The best thing you can do is keep someone around you who's constantly stretching you to recognize that your best game you haven't even seen yet. It's like hiring a fitness trainer, George. You may do 150 sit-ups on your own and and feel like that's enough, but a trainer's inevitably going to get 200 out of you. They're going to push you where you wouldn't go, have you say what you wouldn't say, have you do what you won't do, so you can see the person that you can become. I would say the best thing financially is to get someone in your corner that can stretch you, that makes you a little nervous about who you can be in the world. Have someone. And then the second thing I'd recommend is you have to but you have to pay into your future. You have to invest in your future. My first check I wrote to myself was $110. My son was three years old. I wrote a $110 check to myself, and I put it in the bank. Every two weeks, I would write another check to myself, George, and I'd make sure that it was 5% higher than the last check I wrote. And I kept that bank account available for my growth. So when I went to those 42 courses, I paid for those courses out of that bank account. I didn't care if I didn't have anything on the radar. I still was paying into my future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So personal growth and development and investing in yourself, constant, never-ending improvement. Constant, Listen, if, you, right? if, you're at, if you're at 32 ounces, let, let's, let's look at it as, as a, a, the big goal at 7-Eleven. If you're a 32-ounce and you want to grow your life, you want to grow your life to a 64-ounce life, everything, right. after 30, every, everything after 32 ounces is going to spill over onto the counter. How can you, right. how can you contain right. more than you have the capacity to contain? That's why you ask the question. Now, I know I'm going to step on somebody's toes by saying this, but I love you, so sit Indian style. That's why you end up saying, how did I end up here again? The again came because you were trying to put 56 to 64 ounces in a 32-ounce container. You have to expand the container. You have to expand your capacity. How do you do that? You go to places that stretch you, that make you feel mildly to moderately to significantly uncomfortable. You get a coach in your face and in your space. You sign up for a program. You stay a part of a community that's going to hold you accountable. See, we don't hold each other accountable, and we don't hold ourselves accountable to deliverables. I tell my staff all the time, don't tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you're producing because because of what you did. Mm-hmm. Like what are you, what are you producing in the world? And so, mm-hmm. you know, George, you're the, you're one of the first people that I went to when I got the chicken soup for the soul contract, and you gave me a blueprint to do a book tour. The best form of respect I could do with you was to turn around and deliver, deliver even beyond what you may have done. Because to me, when you have when you have a student, you want your student your student to go beyond you. You want your student to stretch you. So you gave me a book tour, and I don't, I didn't go beyond you, but I did exactly what you did on that book tour. That's the best form of thing, uh, uh, accolades that I can give you is to be in radical action. And there's right. no way you can stay the same. There's no way your capacity won't expand if you stay in action. But you have to have someone giving you direction of where to go. Someone, And if it's not someone physical, it could be in a book. It could be DVD. It could be CD. Don't get me wrong. My first mentors, I, they all mentored me through books and CDs. I, I, I didn't necessarily go. I couldn't. They didn't have conferences. I was following Nelson Mandela. Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, Mahatma Gandhi, those are the people who really inspired my life. So I didn't have access to them. So I I read their work. I became a student of their work. But the moment I can tap into a place, a community, a village, a tribe that I can call mine, that I can check back into, and here's the the marker I set for myself every time. Every time I go back, I have to be at least five steps ahead of where I was the last time I came. Set markers Mm. for yourself. Set accountability goals for yourself. That's why, George, when you see me, I'm moving like at warp speed because I have right. these internal markers. I have these internal markers. You can't see me again, and the only book I had out was the same chicken soup book I had out the last time you saw me. That's right. not fun. That's not fun. Every time you see me, I, every time you see me, I want to give you some new news. That's my new game. It's a new, new day, new game, right? Come on. 
come on. We so uh-huh. many of us are riding on our so many of us are riding on our bios. Your bio is who you were back then. Right. What's your future right. owe? Not your bio, what's your future owe? Who are That's you becoming? What are you producing in the world? And at least recognize. Listen, if you're the best game in your t- in town, then you gotta live in two towns. Live in that one, but live in another one. Well, you right. Be the, be the teacher, <laughs> or, or, be the or live or live in the live on the planet. Like there's mm-hmm. a whole global marketplace out here, right? Which you've been, you know, you impact that, right? With the whole the whole global marketplace, the whole the world, right? Like, with your work, and so Absolutely. you have a big stage. Um, when you, you know, I have your book, no matter what, which I absolutely adore. And you. Um, you talk about bounce back muscle. Yeah. Like bounce yeah. back muscle. So which muscle are you at this point trying to bounce back from? Well, you know, a bounce back muscle is, and, and just to give context to those who may not have read the book, your bounce back muscles are like the first muscle I talk about in the book is your understanding muscle. Uh, understanding that some gifts may come wrapped in sandpaper. Your honesty out loud muscle, which is the muscle that George referenced a moment ago, that I'm very candid and very transparent. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then there's your determination muscle, being willing to push past fear. Uh, And then there's your highest choice muscle, um, being willing to really see the greater good in anything, not looking just at the moment but looking at the higher vision. So the nine particular muscles, I think um, for me um, the muscle that I'm – that I'm really um, flexing now is the faith in myself muscle. That's the muscle that I'm I'm growing because, and and I, I I hope you can relate to this, and I really believe both of you and everyone listening can. It's one thing to have faith in yourself when you're playing your A game, your 2009 version. When I look mm. at my faith in myself muscle for my 2013 game, like you got to mm. ante up. I got to ante up every year for the game that I say I'm going to play the next year. See, I've never been that woman before. I've never been a woman owning a publicly held company where I hear, I'm not, it's not certain, but less than six African-American women have, have ever owned a publicly held company. That's a whole new realm for me. And so it's right now I'm, I'm building my faith in myself, Mr. Lisa. Where do you need to go to get the knowledge you need to get? What do you need to do? Who do you need to be? How spiritually rooted do I need to be? Let me submerge myself in God. Let me submerge myself in my community. Let me make sure I'm anchored. Let me, all of that stuff that I need just to be grounded so that my friend George, who I've had private conversations with about who do you need to be to make this work, mm-hmm. that, that I can make this work, that, that, that Wall Street doesn't, affect me, but that I infect Wall Street. Mm. Mm. And so, and so, uh, and so that's my, Cause, this is my cause they, cause they need you. They need you over there, right? Like, I, they need I, you. I, well. Right, I, I get that. I get that. And, and what does that mean? And to realize that I, I'm not ever interested in, in creating a Pyrrhic victory. A Pyrrhic victory is named mm. after gener, General Pyrrhus. And General Pyrrhus was a general who won two wars. But when he won the second war, he said, I can never afford to win another war like this again because it had cost him his best generals and his best friends. And from that, the word Pyrrhic victory was created. And a Pyrrhic victory is when the cost of the victory, get this, when the cost Mm -hmm. of the victory outweighs the victory itself. And so in this season of my life, George, I'm committed to not creating Pyrrhic victories, like I want holistic success. When you look at holistic success, it embodies four categories of your life. It embodies your spirituality. It embodies your faith, uh, your spirituality, your finances, your business. It embodies your relationships, both romantic, colleague, friends, and family. And it embodies your health. Those four categories, finance, health, relationships and spirituality, holistic success says that you are whole and complete in each of those areas. Most successful people are successful in two of those areas, but the other two are suffering. So I'm in the season of creating holistic success from mm. beginning to end. Mm. What's and been so your biggest the, lesson uh, yeah. you know, yeah. thus far? I mean, what, 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 what are the most important lessons you've learned? Mm-hmm. The ones that I had to put some salve on, I had to put mm-hmm. some mist thorn on. The ones <laughs> the one you I had to take to... Of Excedrin uh, or put a Band-Aid it's, on. It's just 
strength, et cetera. Um, many, 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 many. I, I tell you, um, the, the, the journey to get here um, on some days feels like the, has felt like the, the uh, yellow brick road leading to the whiz. And on other days, it felt, it felt like a walk through a cemetery. And I'm going to be very honest and very transparent oh. with you that um, I've had to, um, I've had to allow old behaviors that I could, that could not fit in my future to die away. I had to, I had to chokehold, put a chokehold on my fear of trusting people because I, I couldn't grow. So I had to, I had to. I had to dismiss that part of of, of not, uh, you know, with due diligence, but 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 being so afraid that, that people are going to take from me that I couldn't open up. So I had to leave that by the wayside. A big lesson that I had to learn, George, was that I could not bring everybody along. Mm. That I had to see we are the, in the African American culture, our livelihood exists in community and family, and then faith. That's our livelihood. Where we didn't have, we would link arms, and somehow your spirit would feed mine. And so that's our, that's, that's our, that's our strength. Our strength is the village. And, and, and as you're growing, uh, it's recognizing how to love my village, how to be with my community, how to be with my people, how to be with my friends, how to be with my family, and how they're different ways, and how you know, I realized that in order for me to be of greatest service to my family, I had to not try to bring everybody with me, go forward, go get it, come back, tell them that it's all right, and coach them from where I am today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, I tried to bring everybody through the doorway. Remember that doorway I talked about earlier, Veronica? <laughs> right. I tried to right. strap every. I tried to strap right. everybody from high school, from the old neighborhood, my cousin, strap everyone to my, my best friend, strap everyone to my back. The first and not, o- my not only can not only can they not fit, and not only do you become exhausted as sort of the Sherpa, right? You like you're like Sherpa, right, going through the doorway, but right. not everybody's actually ready. Right, right, right. Not everybody's and actually so, ready. Right, right. One of my biggest lessons was, I don't ever have to stop loving them, George. I don't ever have to stop adorning them. I just need to love them from a healthy distance. Mm-hmm. And that was a, a hard, because I'm hard-headed. I'm hard-headed in that way. I mean, I want to go down with the boat, but it doesn't make sense. If I drown, if I drown, that, that doesn't increase my loyalty to you. That's my ignorance. So, mm-hmm. so I had to learn that. I had to learn that I need to love people from where they are. I had to leave them where they are, and I had the right to come back and visit them whenever I wanted to. Mm-hmm. That's num- that that was number two. So number one was I had to be willing to let go of some of my toxic behaviors that didn't fit. Number two was let go of people that didn't fit. And number three, one of the biggest lessons um, that I learned was that um, that I had to be willing to walk some of the journey alone and that there are times when no one is going to understand you. No one's going to get your thoughts. No one's going to get your vision. And when I realized that no one is going to get your vision because God didn't give it to anyone else but you, Mm -hmm. when I got that, oh, my God, when I got that, this is my vision, and it's my job to birth it, to bring systems to it, to bring a a, a business plan to it, to bring a service delivery model to it, to birth it so that people like you and Veronica and every other person on this call and people at FraserNet, you can actually see it. It's not your job to see it before I put the legs on it, the walls on it, the paint on it. It's my job to hold it and to bring it to fruition. And so many times, we get frustrated because no one gets our vision. We say no one's supporting us. What I say, please, if you can hear my voice and this is you, I'm going to give you the answer one time. Hold on to it. Put it in your back pocket. No one gets your vision because God gave your vision to you. It's your job to nurture it. When I got that, boy, but George, I thought that one too. Oh, I blamed everybody. I blamed my mama, my daddy. No one really supported me. It wasn't that they didn't support me. It was that it was my vision. Right. right there. <laughs> right. Big lesson. Big lesson. Right. Big lesson for me. Did you, um, the men in your life? Oh, 
is he going the to men in your him? life did you did you learn any lessons from them oh many first of all i have to say um that every man that's come across my path and I don't, i'm not saying this cliche is i'm not saying this as a motivational speaker i'm saying this as a woman as a black woman I have grown to the place of understanding that every single man that I've had the blessing to encounter has added Mm -hmm. something to my life. They've either Mm -hmm. added a great experience, George, or they've Mm -hmm. added a great lesson that I don't have to get get again. Mm -hmm. Every single one. I am the woman I am today, and I love her. She is so, she's grown so much. But every man from from my love, my high school love, to the man. Man, you got six three. Oh, hip hop and R&B is rap for me. Rec one up out of here. Get ready. Be swift. It's coming Hello. up next. Hit your boy on Twitter at Rec one. Have a great night. It's Hello. on and popping tomorrow. Hello. Hello. Hot nine six three. Oh, hip hop so and R&B. I holler. Okay, so hold on. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> so, so, so let me just tell you, he was a plant, so that I had time to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> And he and he brought in his energy, didn't he? That was I just, pressed, I I've never button. heard that on a I pressed the button. Before. He was one of, he was one of the great men in my life. I just wanted you to hear from him personally. <laughs> uh, he, he wanted he wanted you he wanted you to make sure that you knew that I was talking about the men in my life who had all kinds of skills. <laughs> so, wow. I, so I just, yeah. I just, wanna, I just wanna let you know that the men in my life are live, kicking and talking. Uh, That's right. And they're still talking. That's and still right. talking. So as I was saying, um, and, and what I and what I really want you to get is I've had um, I've had beautiful men in my life, even to the degree of my ex fiance, who picked me up and threw me three feet across the room, and choked me until I passed out, and left me in post traumatic stress disorder. Now while I don't ever have to be in his presence again. When you can look at what did I learn? See, most of us feel disempowered, George, because we ask, why me? Why me? What did I do wrong? But the quality of your answers is a direct result of the quality of your questions. When I began to ask, what lesson was I supposed to learn with him? I learned the lesson of discernment. I learned the lesson of listening to my GPS system, my God placement system, the lesson of really standing in my intuitive sense and understanding when the vibe feels off, the vibe is off. So I got a great lesson. So I told you earlier, in in the relationships in my life, the men in my life, from my father to my brother to my son to my romantic to my colleagues, I've either had great experiences or great lessons. I come from a foundation where because I have such a healthy, incredible relationship with my father and with my brother and with my son, um, I'm able to, there's no lack in terms of I'm looking mm. for a man to fill a void in my life. Mm-hmm. I've had those, I, I don't have those voids, but I do realize that as a woman, we have, I have we had a tendency, and I've had a tendency, to lower my integrity bar because in the moment I may have been lonely. Or to lower my integrity bar because I may feel like I'm undateable. Or to lower my integrity bar because uh, because I want to I want it to be convenient. So I've either learned had great experiences or learned great lessons. You know, I in the season where I in this new season that I'm in, I talk about how the next person that I date. And I'm not dating now, but the next person I date, I'm excited for him because for the first time I know the person he's dating so well because I spent so much time learning Lisa, not presenting the Lisa I think you would like, but presenting the Lisa that I've been designed to be without having that resistance of trying to prove my strength. What I learned about strength is true power is silent. True power is silent. True strength, true strength is in the complement of, of, um, of one another. Like, George, when you and I were hanging out in, in, in New York, I love the way you led, and I didn't have to lead. I'll follow because it's not. It, it's about understanding your strength, not exuding your strength, not projecting your strength, just knowing it. True power is the power of humility. So I'm excited about this season of my life and the relay of man, woman, because black women and black men, we have such a, a delicious dynamic. We have such a rhythm. We have such a colorful rainbow together that when we learn how to dance as colleagues, as friends, 
uh, in romance and in family, when we learn how to dance, we sing a song that can't be sung by anyone else. We create a rhythm that no one else can emulate when we learn that. But before we can learn, I can learn your rhythm. I first must learn and understand mm-hmm. and embrace my own. Mm-hmm. And I want to I want to thank you for acknowledging George's rhythm because that silent leadership, right? It's very subtle, but it's leaderly, right? It doesn't impose, it doesn't react, right? He just leads, and so I want to I want I'm I'm glad that you brought that texture up. I know George wasn't expecting this, but it's a really important um, characterization of how he shows up. So thank you for acknowledging that. And George, you may be blushing right now, but I am. I'm turning red. I'm turning yeah. red. <laughs> it's the truth. It's a, and, it, and it's a fantastic model. Thank right? you. I, lead, I appreciate to that. Lead, to lead silently, to lead gracefully. Well, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, Lisa, two final questions. We're running out of time. Boy, the time goes by so quickly. For right. those, all of these wonderful people who are listening to you tonight, some of them may be struggling. Some of them may be in need of some words of guidance on how to get started, how to get restarted, how to get motivated. Um, what 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 should they do to re-energize their life? What what would be one or two things that you would suggest, for perhaps a place or a space within that they go um, and think uh, about? Um, to sort of relaunch uh, or to re-energize the next passage of their life? Well, first of all, and, and this is not a shameless plug, this is a coach giving advice. I hope you plan to be at PowerNet, the Power mm-hmm. Networking Conference. I hope that. I mean, I haven't missed a Power Networking Conference for six years, seven years. Right. Um, from the moment I was introduced to them, I knew – It was the first conference that I said every year I have to be back here. And so, and this is not, I'm not, this is not a plant. I'm not a seed planted to do that. I just hope, you know, I'm, I'm on an international trip. Um, The Arubian government has contracted me to come in and they wanted me to come in on the 26th through the 5th and I are somewhere along that line. And I said, I cannot come until I go to the Fraser Net conference. It was a deal breaker for me. A deal breaker, mm. and so they they shipped it. They they went away for about a month, and I let them go away for about a month. And they came back and they shifted their schedule to make it so that they could I could come in after uh, I come to the Power Networking Conference. So number one, as your coach, it's only for this hour. Let me coach you to say you want to be around brilliant minds, people who when you rub elbows with them, they make you want to be a better woman. They make you want to be a better man. Make it happen. Um, allocate your resources. You know, um, you know, George, with all due respect, um, your conference is literally valued at thousands of dollars. I, I understand what you charge for, but it's valued at thousands of dollars. I pay thousands of dollars to go. I charge thousands of dollars for mine, and, and, and I know the value that you give. So, number one, I, I, I hope that you have prioritized being there. That's number one. And number 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 one A, because there's a number two, number one A is when you're there, please let me see you. I want to see your face. I want to know you're on this call. I want to know that we connected before we got there. I love face-to-face, belly-to-belly, soul-to-soul connection, so let me know. And number two, um, I would say, I always say, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, I always say begin with the end in mind. Right. So I want you tonight, before you go to bed, or tomorrow morning before you start your day, I want you to write yourself a thank you letter and date it December 31st, 2012. And I want you to thank yourself for what you've already accomplished this year. See, when you, your neurological association to something that's already done is much more exciting. The, 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 the energy that fires off when you think of it already done is far greater than the energy that fires off when you think that you have to do something. So write yourself a thank you letter for what you've already done. And I hope you're going to write on a thank you letter, attend at the Power Networking Conference, made a minimum of 20 intensive contacts, followed up on all 20, and, and begun to do some business, learn from, learn with, grow with at least four or five of those people. Um, but write yourself a thank you letter 
for what you've already done in 2012, dated December 31st, 2012. Write that letter before another sun goes down, you mm. know, on, on your life so that you can see how excited you get and how much that becomes your plan of action. And you'll get, you'll get it more active than you've ever been before just by doing that. But number one is always my first and foremost. Mm. And then what was your second question? Did I ask for both or did you have another question, Julie? Yeah, I have, one, I have one other final question as we run out of time here. You are always so generous, and every one of our calls you have um, – you have offered our listeners something special out of your inventory of love. And so is there, do you have anything this evening that you would like to, um, to offer to our listeners? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's a couple of things. Number one, uh, I used to get in the mirror every day, uh, and I used to do the same chant. And it was called, I, I named it Setting My Champion Free. And it got me from a crawl to a walk, from a walk to a run, and from a run to a soar. And so I want to, one, offer you that, setting my champion free. So if you go to Lisa-Nichols, spelled N-I-C-H-O-L-S, again, that's N-I-C-H-O-L-S, and you just put in your name and your email, you'll get setting my champion free uh, Mm -hmm. as a gift um, from me to you. Um, And then... Um, if you're interested, um, we do a we have a no matter what webinar. If you go on my website, um, the no matter what webinar is offered uh, for it's valued at five ninety seven, and we offer it uh, for the next ninety days at one ninety seven. But if you email me at Lisa at Lisa hyphen Nichols dot com again, it's Lisa at Lisa hyphen Nichols dot com, and you put from FraserNet in the in the subject line and in the in the body put I would like no matter what webinar. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna break all rules. We've never done this before. Mm. We're gonna send that to give us ten business days though to get it to you because my my administrative staff is going to be absolutely shocked when they see it. <laughs> They're not gonna know what's going on, but I always want to give George more than I give anyone else. So from FraserNet, put from FraserNet in the subject line, and then in the body put no matter what webinar, give us 10 business days. Luckily, Margaret from my team loves you so much, George, that she's on this call in her off time. She wanted to be a part of this call, so she's probably scrambling wow. taking notes. Uh, she's probably scrambling and taking notes on my promise right now. Uh, so we'll give you both of those things. One, you need to register uh, at the Lisa Hyphen Nichols website, and wow. the other, email us personally. And uh, we've never done that before, but, George, you know, I believe in you. I hope that every single person um, – this is the season, by the way, if I can close with this, this is the season where you have to get radical. You are not going to get the same thing that you've gotten before if you don't get radical. Matter of fact, you can't, you can't get more. You have to become unapologetic. You have to become non-negotiable. Veronica, you mentioned that in this economic climate, um, my company is still growing. My company's net profits grew last year 1,081%. That wow. wasn't accidental. That wasn't accidental. I got radical. So people, listen, my sister, my brother, my friend, get radical. Get somewhere. Get inside the community. I say Fraser Net. That's my vote. I vote for them every time. Hand over foot fist. George, you haven't made that request. I know you're probably going to make it a little easier for people to go. I'm not sure what you're going to do. But if you had it for nine ninety five, if you had it for twelve fifty, if you had it for $2,200, i still tell people, that they need to go. That's right. Non-negotiable. Well, well, we I'll offer, and we would hope that because of your generosity, you're giving people almost two hundred and twenty-five dollars worth of incredible stuff. I mean, that's and and that's the discounted price uh, right. of two hundred and twenty-five dollars with your the book that you're offering as well as the uh, teleseminars or webinars, I should say, because I know you sell that every day, um, okay. you know, at your discounted price at uh, 197 close to 200 bucks. So, you know, that is very, very, very generous. I hope that the least that uh, each of you can do is take advantage of the Power Networking Conference as an expression of, uh, of Lisa's generosity. Go to powernetworkingconference.com, powernetworkingconference.com. Uh, we have a special offer for the conference. It's yes, 695, which is about half of what um, 
uh, what uh, mainstream America charges for their conference, um, but we have it uh, on sale for two hundred and ninety nine dollars. And then wow. we want you to bring a college age student with you, seventeen to twenty five. Uh, student price is three hundred and ninety five dollars. You will pay nothing to bring a student. Um, and then we have a very special pre conference program. The first time we've ever done this at the Power Networking Conference, we have one person speaking for an entire day, Lisa Sasevich, how to turn your your passion into profit. She's one of the best in the business at uh, at this technology, um, and the masters sit at her feet, and she is just quite genius. Uh, that particular full day Wednesday seminar, that's that's on the 26th, uh, is fourteen hundred and ninety five dollars by itself. But if you take advantage of uh, of the offer uh, of two ninety nine, we will give you that free of charge. So you have twenty five hundred dollars worth of personal growth and development available to you tonight for two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Wow. Another <laughs> couple of hundred dollars minimal in in in, in sales value from Lisa Sasevich. So she uh, not from Lisa Sasevich from from uh, Lisa Nichols. Um, so it's 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 just uh, this is your lucky night. So you've got three thousand dollars worth of personal growth and development stuff you can invest in yourself, ways that you can invest in yourself, being around incredible people, meeting um, uh, Lisa Nichols live and in living color, and you will just be infected by her spirit. Um, all of this, everything you've heard tonight um, for just two ninety nine. So go to powernetworkingconference.com. That's powernetworkingconference.com. Take advantage of it. And, um, uh, and, and and we want to see you. Lisa wants to see you. Veronica wants to see you. We want to help you. We want to serve you. We want to add value to to your to your life. And and we deeply understand that God didn't put us here to make money. He put us here to make a difference and to add value. And when you make a difference and add real value, you will not be able to get out of the way of money. And we want to teach you how to do that, how to make a difference and how to add real value, as Lisa has made a difference and added real value to our lives tonight. So we love you for that, Lisa. We love you, Veronica, for uh, being a great hostess. And with great questions and adding energy and fuel to the conversation and to this fire tonight, um, uh, it, it is. George, George, yes. may, I, may I just add something for those who may not have heard of Lisa Sasevich, so that they understand the value. Okay. Lisa Sasevich, Lisa Sasevich have taken hundreds of business owners from a startup business to where they were earning six figures with her sales techniques. She knows how to close the room. She knows how to teach you how to increase your revenues. She knows how to have you monetize your intellectual property. She will teach you clear, powerful techniques that will move your business forward. You know, she and I have taught on many of the same stages. I've taught some of her courses. She's taught some of my courses. When I tell you a powerful, powerful woman, uh, she is going to be a, a true added value. If you're planning to go to the Power Networking Conference, to have her for free, F-R-E-E is insane. Right. If you're planning to go, you definitely want to take when, – when, when George says this course is worth 1400 plus, I mean, if it's not 1400 it's more than that because she's for six hours, I believe, she's teaching techniques on how to monetize your business, how many people have a great talent but they don't know how to monetize it. So she's right. going to be teaching how to monetize your business. Many of my students have been her students before, and they have nothing but great things to say about Lisa Sasevich and her and her team. And I'm going to have, at the conference, I'm going to have one of my vice president, Melissa Evans, there. And we're going to, because I, I'll be there for some time, and then I'll have to go. Melissa Evans will be there during the conference. Uh, she's a master on systems and implementation. That's her gift. She's a, a master implementer and showing you how to put systems. And I asked her to be available the entire conference just to sit with people and coach them. So she's just going to be there available to, and I'll introduce you to her when I'm on stage so you'll know what she looks like. And she's just going to be sitting with people and serving, serving, serving. So there's tons of gifts there, all between the cracks and in between the lines. Awesome. Well, Lisa, you've been incredible. I mean, what, this, what, what can I say? You, you always are. You just don't show up and not be incredible. That's just who you are. 
We love you, and thank you so much you. for being so generous with you. time and so generous with your gifts um, and so generous with your knowledge. I mean, you just never hold back, and I, mm-hmm. I truly love you. For, for that, I mean, you just give. You always give incredible content, um, and uh, it's just a you know, it's just a real model for all of us who are out here are trying to help our community grow and to teach. And and, and 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 you know, Lisa, when you listen to Lisa, she is the model of the kind of energy and expression of ideas Amen. and the free expression of ideas um, that we have to continually pour into our community. So God bless you for that. And, and thank you so much for, for being over time with us. And, and, and again, Veronica, um, uh, if you have anything you want to say to close out, uh, please. I'll do. just, I'll just see everybody on the call at the conference. I look forward to seeing you there. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Uh, remember, it's not about me. It's about we, and that it takes teamwork to make the dream work. And yes, we have the timber, brothers and sisters, so we must build. God bless you. Keep doing God's work. Good night, everybody.